What's good, prima donnas? Back again today with another video, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about weave. This is gonna be my weave 101 breakdown video, wig 101. Basically, in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down all of the terms. That way, you guys can understand hair terms, like when we say things like closures and frontals, if you guys really don't know what the difference is. As you guys know, I do wanna show you guys how to make wigs, but before I start my wig making series, I wanna break it down for you guys so that way you guys know what I'm talking about when I talk about bundles and hair and things like that. So if you guys want to see this video, then definitely keep on watching. So jumping right into this video, I really wanted to make this video because I wanted to really, really break it down to you guys. I had to think for a second and I had to like, you know, pause and think, um how I first was when I, you know, discovered the world of weave, okay? Um, it's a bunch of different type of terms and different ways that you can wear weave. So when I first started wearing weave, um, I just really knew about clip-ons. Really didn't know what someone was talking about when they would say like, oh, how would you want your hair? And just really rewind and type and kind of like go into the mind of a beginner when it comes up to weave. I was only 14, 15, you guys. I used to only wear clip-on extensions, you guys. That's to me like the easiest way just do some clip-ons um i haven't worn clip-ons in a while you guys but i'm pretty sure you guys all know what clip-ons look like so that is really good if you guys actually have some of your hair out you can just use some clip-ons just to give you some length and things like that but I don't know, lately i just been really into wigs and bundles and you know the va va voom and a lot of hair that I don't know, um, it's just been kind of like a new passion for me. I still of course my first love will always be makeup but I am into hair and fashion so I try to do a little bit of everything here on the channel as you guys can see. So, so many requests you guys to do how you make a wig and things like that but I want to break it down for my beginners. So first thing I'm going to cover is hair type. So hair type meaning like human hair or you can get synthetic hair human hair easier to work with you don't have to worry about the heat you can use heat on it you can wash it you can dye it you can bleach it you can do whatever you want you synthetic hair you can only put up to so much heat on it if it depends on the type of synthetic hair you're getting um some type of synthetic hair probably goes up to 350 degrees that you could put heat on it to me synthetic hair really doesn't hold a, a great curl you cannot wash synthetic hair you cannot dye synthetic hair get a little bit more versatility with human hair so i highly recommend human hair second thing we're going to be covering is hair textures so when I say the texture of a certain hair what I mean is by its pattern so when I say texture a texture can be it can be curly texture it can be a wavy texture it can be a body wave it can be a straight texture the hair texture that I am rocking right now this is a natural wave you guys so this is different than pin straight texture this hair is kind of like my wet and go hair like i showed you in my last video now you have your texture of your hair so there's a few textures of course you guys know i only fuck with ali julia so i'm gonna be talking about ali julia hair in this video the texture that i'm wearing right now in my head like i said is the natural wave so this right here is called a bundle this will be considered one bundle of hair you want to get bundles depending on how full or how thin you want the hair. Me, personally, when I make a wig, I go anywhere from two to three bundles. I kind of like my comfort zone. Um, more than three bundles to me is way too much hair. Less than two bundles to me is too little bit of hair. It depends on what the hair is. Usually, curly hair to me is a little bit more fuller. So when I do curly hair, I tend to use less bundles than when I'm working with straight hair. So just keep that in mind. But it's all personal preference, of course, how you want to rock your hair. Hey, Julia, um, natural wave as you guys can see it is just a nice water wave water wave texture is just so beautiful um usually bundles come in like a natural brown color it's not black 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 if you want your hair to be jet black you can dye them black but usually they come in like a really really natural dark brown so this is the natural wave but compared to a different texture and this is the texture that i had last month this is the malaysian curly texture so as you guys can see um as you guys can see curly hair looks a lot more fuller now of course 
the reason why this looks a lot shorter is because this is a lot curlier so like i said these are just examples of two different textures and hair and what you know a bundle is of hair you guys know more or less about the textures so now there's different type of ways that you can actually rock the weave sorry if you guys hear autumn crying she's actually in the living room with kenny um you can do sew-ins or you can do which is a little bit more permanent or you can do a wig um me personally i like both um it depends on what type of style I'm going for. If I'm going for a drastic color that I know that I don't want to wear super, super often, I'll make it into a wig. But if it's something that I, you know, would like to rock for a long period of time, I will, I will prefer to get a sew-in. So what I'm rocking right now is a sew-in. A sew-in is basically when you get your hair braided up, proceed to start sewing on your bundles onto your braids. You could choose to do a sew-in with a closure or with a front to which I will show you in a second or you could choose to have hair out which I prefer to have hair out when I do my sew-ins so hair out basically you choose what part of your hair you want left out usually I will keep like the front so now I'm gonna show you guys like the difference of wigs so like I said the first and the easiest wig for me that I've ever made um, is a U part wig like all the tracks sewn onto a cap and then you will go and put your natural hair on top so to me the U part mimics a sew-in the most um, so this is basically a U part this is the Ali Julia this was the body wave um and this is one of the first wigs that i've ever made front this is what i mean by a u part so okay <laughs> so this is the it, the the making of the wig as you guys can see it's just a wig cap in there and she is closed off with clips so i'm gonna i'm gonna put her this way so that way you guys can see but i did attach three clips onto the u parts and the way you would put this on is you would just clip it um i do have a video on how i rock my u part i will link that down below if you guys want to see but yeah and you will rock your u part and clip it onto your hair and then you will put your natural hair on top of this that way nobody will see you know this so this is really really easy to make um like i said i'm gonna be doing my whole wig making series so i will break it down to you guys how i create a u part so the second wig I'm going to be showing you guys is a lace closure wig. A lace closure wig, you do not need any of your hair out. So usually I would do a closure or a frontal when I'm doing kind of like a crazy color. For example, the honey blonde wig that I made um, a few months back. Um, she's a little a little tangled right now. Sorry, because the way I store my wigs are in a bin. I just put, took them out the bin. But as you guys can see, she has a closure. So that's... Um, the closure, right now I have her in a middle part, but that little part right there, that is a closure. So I'm going to I'm gonna <clears throat> show you guys the inside of the cap, that way you guys can see. But as you guys can see, the only little bit of lace is this gap right here. So this is just the only space that you have to put any type of part. For me, when you're rocking a closure wig, it is very easy to blend um, because it's it's a lot more easier than working with a frontal a closure. It's really one, two, three. You might have to, you know, customize your part a bit, but to me, it's a lot easier than a frontal. And as you guys can see, the closure right here and then the rest of the hair is bundles. Guys, what a closure looks on its own, like without, you know, like without it being in a wig. So this is the Malaysian, um, this is the Malaysian curl as you guys can see this is what it looks like when you just get a closure usually I like to use these on wigs so this is what a closure is so like I said my red wig is a clo uh, closure wig and is a lace closure wig and my blonde wig has a lace closure so now I'm gonna show you um, a wig that I made that actually has a front tool this one has way more lace than the closure as you guys can see um this one is actually a 360 frontal so this one the frontal goes all the way from the nape of the neck so that way you guys can pick it up in a ponytail but usually it'll just be ear to ear i'll show you guys like i said off the wig because i have a frontal here with me but usually a frontal you get way more parting space i really really enjoy frontal wigs the only thing that i would say about a frontal wig is i would prefer for you to get a little bit of more experience before you start messing and jumping into frontals only because they require a little bit more work meaning that it is a lot more customizing and is a lot more during the application process that as a closure is just put it on and you know finesse it and go but yeah so big so you have way more lace in the fronts which you get way more versatility way more you know parting space things like that what a frontal looks like when it's not on a wig so as you guys can see it just looks like this 
Uh, I'm just going to use this for next month's style that I'm going to be making. But as you guys can see, this will go from ear to ear. So as far as the application process, a lot of people like to do things to, you know, make their wigs look natural as far as like plucking and bleaching the knots. So plucking me meaning like, the hairline on this front too is very very dense meaning like it's full and as you guys can see on anybody's hairline it does not start hella hair you know it starts off thin and then it gets fuller as it you know goes to the back a lot of people like to customize the hairline on their frontals by plucking and out you know sometimes i pluck on my closures as well just so that way it doesn't look so dense so it looks a lot more natural um so yeah as far as bleaching the knots when somebody says bleach the knots on a closure or on a frontal, they mean like this part, the inside. Of course, you're not going to bleach the hair. You're going <laughs> to bleach the lace. And you put a very, very thick consistency of bleach, powder bleach and developer, on your lace. And what it will do is basically hide these black little knots. I will show you right here. If you can see, but all of these black little dots, those are all of the knots. So basically when you bleach the inside of the knots, it will kind of make that part look more like scalp. So <clears throat> that's really what they say when you bleach the knots. Like I said, the easiest thing to apply to me is a closure wig. Um, just a concealer, part it, flatten it, call it a day. A front two is a little bit more, requires a lot more application. Some people use like the whole got to be gel. Some people use tape. Some people use lace glue. Um, it depends on personal preference. Like I said, it depends on the look that you're going for. Um, so yeah. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If I did leave anything out do not hesitate to ask me any questions that you guys have if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and until next time guys i will talk to you soon bye